companies are leaving the cloud, unfortunately, and this will be the end of the cloud hype, and that's it. Go back to A+, plus Network+, plus CCNA, and CCNP. Of course, this is the explanation of the title. This is not what is happening in fact. However, there is a lot of rumors and people who don't know what they are talking about, they just listen to something like parrots and then repeat it. And I get a lot of these responses to my videos and comments to my videos that cloud is going to die because everyone is moving out of the cloud. And of course, this could be because the people are offended that I'm talking about legacy and traditional IT compared to modern IT and what are the skills. And I'm an advocate, despite that I come from a networking background and I am a CCIE since 2005. And I have spent most of IT career, which is more than 20 years in networking. I um, have been calling people for almost eight to 10 years now, move from the networking or upskill into what's happening. People hate me, I don't care, but I'm saying the truth and it's always supported by evidence. And this video is no different because it will also show you evidences of what I'm stating. So is cloud dying? Are companies moving out of the cloud? And should we stick to the on-premises or everything will be hosted in the customer's data centers? And the answer is, no, don't. Cloud is going to be there and is going to remain driven by the AI and analytics and big data and Internet of Things and machine learning and many trends that are much easier to be started and stopped in the cloud, scaled in the cloud, as opposed to spending fortunes to build a company's own data center and host all the applications with the administration and staffing and the hassle and all that. So what is the term cloud repatriation? So basically companies deciding to move some of their workloads or maybe all of their workload back from the cloud to on-premises because they are not comfortable because of cost reasons, because of misconfigurations, wrong expectations, or whatever is the decision that causes that to happen. So let's go through this find out what's happening and be enlightened. So when we hear someone talking about this, we would stop them politely and say, I don't think so, and this is not accurate, and that's an over-exaggerated statement. And here are the facts, and you can even prove with these articles that I'm going to share with you, all right? So let's go and find out what is cloud repatriation as a definition. So if you can look here at the top, an AI definition, cloud repatriation is the process of moving data. So companies moving their data, applications or workloads from a public cloud environment back to the on-premises data center or a private cloud or a hybrid cloud infrastructure. So that's the repatriation as a definition. This shift can be driven by various factors, including cost optimization, performance improvement, security concerns, or the need of greater control over the IT infrastructure. So that's the definition, and this is going to show that this is workload that was in the cloud, was moved to the cloud, or maybe started in the cloud, and now they are shifting it back under their control. And also Tick Target, which is a very reputable, again, um, analysis and um, newsletter about IT and research and analysts and all that. They are talking about repatriation and what are the leading causes, and you'll find if we scroll, evolution of public cloud providers, and then what are the reasons, common reasons for cloud repatriation. It could be cost, it could be control. Companies would like to take control again. Storage, the cost of public cloud storage is high. It could be misconfiguration, and it gives them the impression that they are not in the right place or in the right solution. Performance issues, they don't want to be locked into a single vendor. They would like to have control and skills gaps. They cannot find or hire the right skills that are going to run the public cloud infrastructure with all its new and modern IT skills and all that. Then we go into IDC, a very, very reputable. I mean, this, uh, I'm aware about them and I use them and I read their articles for more than 30 years now. So storm clouds ahead, missed expectations in cloud computing, and this is not all. This is end of 2024, okay? So missed expectations in cloud computing, wrong expectations, not understanding what the cloud is, going into the cloud, thinking that it's going to be the cheapest IT infrastructure and we're not going to pay money and all that. And all of a sudden, 
we find issues either because of cost or because we don't have control anymore or everything is in the cloud provider and we don't have any say about 90% of what is happening in the cloud it could be miss staffing or under staffing in in sense in the sense of modern IT and all that so cost overruns performance and latency security and compliance concerns complexity in management and the repatriation trend what is repatriation they explained it and drivers cost performance security operation and control and here is the important one because people say the cloud is going to die everyone is moving out of the cloud people don't like it people hate it and usually people who are lazy and they don't want to upskill or those who are denying the fact that things have changed and they don't want to shift and be flexible they are going to be the ones that will be the strongest adopters of this trend or these rumors so while repatriation is a growing trend, it's not a wholesale migration. They are not bringing everything back. According to IDC Server and Storage Workload Survey, only 8 to 9% of companies plan full workload repatriation. So they are going to take everything they put in the cloud back into their own premises. So 8 to 9%, less than 10%. And we are not mentioning the new companies moving into the cloud. So this 9% or 10%, let's say, are going to take everything back. Instead, most organizations repatriate specific elements of their workloads, such as production data, maybe backup processes or compute resources. And some companies would say, no, 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 I'm fine with the cloud, I love it. But for some workloads, the database needs to be next to the application. And this application is critical. I'm not going to move it to the cloud. So I have to bring the database back next to the application. All right, but what if some applications in the cloud, they need to access the database? Then that's fine. Let's build a hybrid cloud. I'm going to connect my data center to the public cloud with a link, wide area network link, a high speed link, or maybe internet VPN, and they will be able to communicate. So that was never going to be a showstopper that it's either on premises or in the cloud. The hybrid model allows the merge of the two or the connectivity between the two. Lar large organizations are more active in repatriating workloads compared to smaller businesses. So all the startups, all the AI and machine learning and IoT and so on startups, they will definitely go in the cloud. It's a very quick time to market compared to building everything and also the expenses, OPEX, operational expenses, a bill that is paid at the end of the month when they use services, as opposed to buying servers and buying database and buying licenses and buying everything and building that in-house. Okay, so this is due to their greater resources, large workloads and more complex IT environments. Economic factors and comprehensive workload strategies also play a role in driving repatriation activities among large enterprises. So what's the conclusion? The initial promise of cloud computing has not been fully realized for many organizations, leading to missed expectations and a growing trend of workload repatriation. And these are the reasons. And while the cloud remains the vital component of modern IT strategies, businesses are increasingly adopting a hybrid approach. Some here, some in the cloud. Optimizing their workload replacement across public cloud, private cloud, and on-premises environment. So the conclusion for this short video is, if you hear someone telling you that people are moving out of the cloud, nod your head. Yep, I know. Their cloud is going to die. No, it's not going to die. Less than 8 to 9% of the companies are pulling their full environments from the cloud, and the rest are going to balance between some on-premises and some in the cloud. So what you should do is don't hesitate in getting into modern IT and learning the cloud and know that is going to stay for a long, long time. And the expectations is $1.5 trillion global cloud revenues by 2032. So you are in safe hands and you are investing in the right career if you are studying the cloud now, all right? So please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, appreciate if you activate notifications to receive the new video alert. And also if you have benefited from the video, please consider giving us a like so the video can be shared and can reach more people. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.